We start dancing Kizomba in a time that Kizomba was not famous like it is nowadays and in a time that there was not so many styles like uh, it happened nowadays. It's like salsa, for those that know a little bit the story, it's the same thing, bachata, tango, all the styles of dance have this kind of evolution. So we're gonna try to share with you what make us um, fell in love for this culture, okay? So do you know the meaning of the word kizomba? No, so starting for that, kizomba means party in an Angolan, fet, uh, in an Angolan dialect called kimbundu. This word exists forever and people are used to use it when they want to go to have fun. Let's go to the Kizomba, let's go to the Kizombada, let's go to have fun, to hang out, to share with the friends. But on the final of 70s, beginning of 80s, uh, Angola was in a period of civil war. So mainly the musical production that was made was for uh, intervention, okay? Because it was a very complicated time there. So they were consuming international music to have fun. Music from Cape Verde, from Congo, from all Africa, including the pop music was entering with Michael Jackson, music from Latin America. So they were having fun with this kind of sonorities. So there was a young generation, uh, and we need to <coughs> speak about a name that is called Eduardo Paim, that he decided to pick up the traditional rhythms from Angola, like Samba, and music that was coming from the French Caribbean, like Compa, and also music coming from Congo, because he was born there due to being a refugee of the war, and he created like a cocktail, something new, something different. Uh, and people connected to that. But the old generation told, look, young kid, this is beautiful, but this is not Samba, so you need to arrange a new name. So in a very, not thinking in a future way, as their propose was to do music for fun, for party, when they asked them what is the name of the music that you are doing, they said this is Kizomba. Okay, so it was like very intuitive and with the time it was adopted. At the same time, more or less, a little bit later, 84, 85, appeared a massive explosion coming from Guadalupe, Martinique, called Casar, that were the inventors of Zouk music, the, uh, the retro Zouk, the Zouk from the French Caribbean. So they were like massive all over the world. And there was a high demand of the audience to listen to that kind of music. So in Africa also, the orchestras, the groups, they were forced in somehow to play this kind of Zouk music, but in their own way, with their influence, with their instruments. So this style of music highly influenced what we know nowadays as Kizomba, because in Cape Verde they didn't call it Kizomba, they call it Kola. Zouk. It was the fusion between coladera, traditional music from Cape Verde, and Zouk music brought from the French Caribbean. Mozambique, they call it also uh, Passada to the Dance, but the music they didn't have a name. Um, if you go to, to uh, Guinea Bissau, Bike the Banca Jazz, they call it Afro Zouk because they were doing Zouk with African flavor. So at this time, Kizomba was not associated to the dance, it was associated to the music. Because in Angola they were dancing pasada to all genders of music, including to Latin American music, they were doing pasada. Okay, so it was an body interpretation to all styles of music. It was mainly important <coughs> when the immigration started to appear a lot, a lot of different African communities start going there trying to find better living conditions, running away from the war, better education. So the communities start hanging out together and the word kizomba start being spread. And even in that time, the things start getting evolution, the new styles that start appearing regarding music, sonority, music from Cape Verde, music from Angola. Uh, at the late 90s, beginning of 2000, the ghetto zook start appearing by the Cape Verdeans that were living in uh, Holland, mainly uh, Nelson Freitas, Mopais, Johnny Ramos, all these artists that still play today. So this is like a fast introduction to tell you that there is a big history before, and around 2013, 2014, appear also a new style of music, uh, mainly with influences with dubstep music. So LGBT Skilla start producing this kind of music, Dansa Kizomba, and guys like Ena and Curtis from France, they start receiving that music and wanting to do a different interpretation because always music and dance are side by side. So they start creating a new style of music, of dancing, that people also, the old generation said, look, this is beautiful, but this is not Kizomba, so you need to arrange a new name. 
and, <laughs> and a lot of different names appear, the French style, the Kizomba 2.0, blah, 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 and then they agree that they should call it Urban Kiss. Uh, but even after, more styles start appearing because people that connect with new styles but don't connect with urban keys, they start calling it fusion also. And nowadays you have a lot of different trends. So for a newcomer, this might be a little bit, uh, a lot of information, but it's important at least mm -hmm. for you to understand that exists, even if you don't want to dig and you just want to have fun and enjoy. And this is the main purpose of you being here, to learn, of course, technique, but you want to have fun after and meet new people and maybe to travel and have a new uh, language to speak. Because if you go anywhere in the world, you know how to dance Kizom, you have people that dance Kizom, you don't speak the same language, but you can <coughs> communicate. The same with salsa, with all the social uh, dances. Make sense?